Hello and welcome to the Glow of Wolves Exotic Shotgun Review. I'm going to cover literally everything there is about this weapon and there's a timestamp in the description so you can skip over sections you don't think are important. Lord of Wolves has been a really difficult gun to review so I hope you enjoy this review. First, let's quickly go over how to get this weapon. Again, if you know how to, skip over to the next section. You can get the Lord of Wolves from an exotic bounty called the Elder Cipher. It has a chance of dropping after you kill either the level 34 or 35 prison of elders final boss once per character, once per level every week. So that means each week you have 6 chances at getting the bounty if you have 3 characters. Once you get it, go see Varix and he'll have you open a queen's chest on level 32 or higher prison of elders. Then you have to wait approximately 3 days for Varix to finish doing his thing. When the time is apt, the bounty will look like this and there will be an exclamation mark over his head so check regularly. Return to Varix and he'll have you earn 1000 prison of elders boss points. This is best done generally by either killing the level 32 boss 5 times or doing 2 full level 34 runs. Then you choose your weapon. Now let's go over the stats and perks, see what makes this exotic and sets it apart from all the other shotguns. Right away you can see that it looks like a typical high impact shotgun but with extremely bad range and stability. Now you can fix that partially with the barrels. Instead of going with smart drift control, I recommend going with soft ballistics or linear compensator depending on whether you need more stability or range and impact. Our first perk is hip fire and that increased hip fire accuracy is useful in clutch situations but generally you'll want to ADS and reach just a little bit further. In the tree of perks, you can choose between speed reload, extended mag, and perfect balance. Speed reload is okay but the mag size of 30 is good enough and you generally won't be caught short so I recommend going with extended mag in PvE and perfect balance for PvP. Extended mag increases your mag size to 39 and unlike field scout it doesn't increase your reserve ammo at all. In PvE it is very useful for taking out bigger enemies and bigger groups of enemies without running out. Perfect balance increases your stability by a lot and while it's not particularly useful in shotguns, it is useful for this gun since it fires in the burst but I'll get to that later. The max reserve ammo you can hold without an armor that increases your shotgun ammo is 180 and with the matching armor you can hold up to 244. In PvP, with the shotgun armor you will spawn with 70 ammo. Even if you consider that it shoots in a burst of 5, that's still a lot of ammo. Just a note while we covered the stats. The rate of fire, impact, and range are mostly irrelevant as this gun works in a very unique way. Now let's cover the exotic perk, Devil's Touch. The way it's worded is very particular and you might think that it buffs you as well. However, the way this perk works is that it gives plus 3 recovery to everyone in a certain distance with within you but not you. So you do not get the recovery boost while your teammates do. At first I was baffled as to why they would do this but now I got it figured out and I will cover it in the playstyle section. When you kill an enemy with this shotgun, it flashes Lord of Wolves on your screen and recovery boost on your teammates. The recovery lasts 30 seconds and is actually shorter than you think, especially since the duration doesn't refresh on kill. However, the buff itself is actually significant. Plus 3 recovery gives your teammates a lot of recovery boosts decreasing your shield charge delay and increasing the shield recharge rate. This allows them to spec into armor and agility more or if they already have high recovery stats, it decreases their downtime significantly. The downside to this perk is besides not refreshing on a kill, the radius of this effect is pretty small so you have to be pretty much standing next to your teammate. I will go over what this means to you in the following sections. Also, this gun has a hidden perk and it is that it shoots in a burst of 5. That is why rate of fire, impact, and range stats are not to be taken at face value. The burst shoots extremely fast at 900 RPM but the sustained fire rate is not as fast. What burst fire essentially does is that it spreads out damage over time. The bad thing about the burst fire is that it is almost going to lose against high impact one shot shotgun snipers such as Fell Winter's Lie, Matador, or party crusher all the time, especially if they have range increasing perks. In PvE, the burst fire is just fine because of staggering. 
Also, controlling the burst fire and making sure every shot in the burst lands on the enemy requires extra effort on your part for not that much of a benefit to damage. However, the good thing is, if you miss a shot, you can still hit the enemy whereas when somebody misses with the one-shot shotguns, if you miss, you're dead. Now let's go over how this weapon performs in PvE. The DPS is good enough and the solar damage is pretty useful for wizards, knife shanks, and cabal. It kills tier 2 enemies in 2 bursts if your aim is good and majors in 3 to 4 bursts. Range is not bad and I actually found it to be higher than expected and it's nice being able to take out melee enemies before they can take me down. The exotic perk is actually useful for higher end content where that small bit of recovery boost can decide between life or death. I actually noticed my teammates dying way less when they are buffed by my gun. It shines in situations where you and your teammates have to be close. So that's basically boss fights, defending a plate, or in small areas with dense enemies. The common denominator for all these encounters is that there is limited movement and you and your teammates will have to stick together and move as a team. This shotgun can be used aggressively, but the burst fire makes this not the best aggressive weapon and you won't be utilizing the exotic perk much if you do that. Not to mention that there are better aggressive shotguns in PvE. The nature of burst fire naturally lends itself to a more defensive playstyle which will throw you off the first few times you use this weapon because at least for me, shotguns are usually used aggressively. Also the large ammo pool means you can hold your position for extended periods of time and not run out during longer engagements, further lending to defensive playstyle. As long as you play defensively and be team oriented, you will be the leader of the pack and be able to buff your team quite successfully. Also the burst fire nature of this gun really shines when there's specialist on since it will kill most enemies within one burst and results in a very short time to kill. In PvP the story is a little bit different. The first thing that you will notice is that you lose against Phil Winter's Lie all the time. While it does 48 damage per pellet which seems very high, the lack of pellets and the burst fire makes going against the standard shotguns very difficult. However, if they miss the first shot, you'll usually win thanks to the burst fire. It is surprisingly fun to use and performs surprisingly well if you land to the defensive playstyle. But because of the burst fire, it is difficult going against strafing or fast moving targets. This shotgun works best when someone is coming straight at you or away from you, so that's why you generally don't want to be aggressive with this shotgun. Ammo count is pretty good and allows you to keep using the shotgun without running for the special ammo box every time it spawns. The exotic perk is pretty much useless in PvP because you'll be moving around a lot of the time and so will your teammates, so it's pretty difficult to get them to stay close to you. Besides, the 30 second duration is too short especially in PvP to result in anything useful. Sometimes it can be utilized well in objective modes or team based modes such as Salvage, Control, Trials of Osiris, and Skirmish, but even then the, the benefit of Devil's Touch will be questionable. Now let's get into the playstyle and find out what this gun is for. The burst fire limits this to a defensive role and the exotic perk essentially makes you a support character, especially because the gun doesn't buff you. It is best for very team based encounters and shines when teammates stick together as radius is pretty small. The thing is, most people don't know or understand the effect of this gun, so they'll just run around even if you tell them about what this gun is and how it works. So hopefully by watching this video, people can understand to stick around the person using Lord of Wolves if they see one. So you usually have to have a well communicated team composed of people you know well to bring the best out of this weapon. And because you have to stay close together, it is useful for boss fights, Crota's end except for the actual Crota boss, Vault of Glass, Plates and Confluxes, House of Wolves public event, Salvage Control, Trials and Skirmish. An interesting thing to note is that as the difficulty rises in PvE, you are more and more likely to use exotic heavies. So the recovery buff has to be useful enough to replace your Yalahorn. And for quite a few high end PvE encounters, it is. Also, if you get the playstyle wrong and try to play aggressively, it gets very frustrating very fast. You need to be able to predict enemy movement and if you can do that, you'll win. In PvE, because of the burst fire, it sits somewhere between a low rate of fire, high impact shotguns, and full auto shotguns so it becomes more and more useful when the high impact shotguns stop one shotting tier 2 enemies, so basically in high level encounters. This leads us to the natural comparison of Lord of Wolves to the other legendary and exotic shotguns. While the range is surprisingly good and the drop off is less significant than it is in other shotguns, against something that has hammer forge or naturally high range, it is beat. 
It has also beat in one-shot capabilities when compared to high-impact shotguns, especially in PvP. Ammo count is much higher than the other shotguns, so that's one positive. In terms of DPS, it is also beat by full auto shotguns. But the thing is, most of the time you won't be using Lord of Wolves for the pure damage more so than the recovery boost. So it's pretty useless comparing this to shotguns like Felwinter's Lie, Fourth Horseman, Invective, Fun Verdict, or Secret Handshake, which are all pretty aggressive shotguns. Also, since Burst Fire is situationally useful and nothing else shoots in Burst Fire, Lord of Wolves carves out its own little niche, so this further eliminates any point of pairing Lord of Wolves against other shotguns. Now one interesting fact about this gun is that it shoots one pellet per shot. One. So that's why even though the pellet does 48 damage in PvP, which is really high considering that Fell Winters with aggressive ballistic only does 25 per pellet, the gun lacks in pure damage. If you look at the DPS, you will see why I said rate of fire and impact were pretty much useless because it shoots one pellet in bursts of five and the sustained fire rate is in its own class. Sustain fire rate is around 82 to 85 bursts per minute, which is faster than it should be, but is lower than guns with full auto. So that's why, while this deals more DPS than your average shotgun, if you want max DPS, you should go with full auto shotguns. And if you look at the numbers, it is clearly lacking in terms of damage, even with the strongest ballistics. It's interesting to see how this falls right between single shot shotguns and full auto shotguns in terms of DPS. So, is this worth the exotic slot? Well, for PvE, only if you need the recovery buff. In a few situations, the recovery is much needed and it's worth giving up Yellowhorn or Thunderlord in exchange for your teammates not going down. Giving up the exotic slot becomes even easier if you have some good primary weapons such as Fatebringer, Visual Confluence, or the Messenger. In PvP, it is almost never worth the exotic slot, that alone worth using it. It is not for the traditional aggressive shotgun roll. And the lack of pellets and the burst fire makes this gun uncompetitive. It is better to use exotic primaries since they will net you more kills and allow you to use one-shot shotguns. So which Elder Cypher weapons should I choose? Should I even choose Lord of Wolves at all? Well, there's no best choice. However, I would say Lord of Wolves is probably the best PvE choice due to its recovery boost and catering towards high-end PvE content. This is not suited for PvP. If you're a big PvP player, I would suggest you go with Queenbreaker's Bow. So in conclusion, this burst fire shotgun lends itself to a very defensive and team-based playstyle. The unique traits and buffs are useful for high-end PvE content, but even then, you must weigh the importance of recovery boost against pure DPS and risk. DPS isn't amazing, but good enough for general use. In PvP, while it's fun to use and can reach from surprisingly far away, the burst fire and the lack of pellets makes this gun less competitive. The buff is near useless in PvP, so it's best to use an exotic primary and a high impact shotgun instead. It's an A rank exotic in PvE and B rank in PvP. I hope you enjoyed this review, and if anyone you know wants to learn anything about Lord of Wolves, please direct them to this video. I'll see you in the next review which is Queenbreaker's Bow.